Abu Huraira narrated that the judgment will not come until a room will come out to fight you at a place called Amaq or Dabiq. Now, Dabiq is, and Amaq is close to it, Dabiq is a city in Syria. And the so-called Islamic State took it as its capital. And they intentionally fought to get a small city, a very mid-sized or small-sized city. They wanted to capture that city. Why? Because it's mentioned in this hadith. And we had said a few weeks ago, that it is not allowed to do what? Do you remember? I mentioned this very clearly. It is not allowed to do what? S write a screenplay from the hadith. We don't write a Hollywood drama from the hadith. It happens, it will happen. We do not extract a drama and enact it. We've seen what happened throughout history when people have attempted to do that. No, we don't do that. It happens, it will happen. But you don't think you are the one who's going to go do that. We have seen time and time again, people have attempted to do that and it has failed miserably. And one of the most important examples, this is another example of ISIS and Dabiq and whatnot. Another example we mentioned is Juhayman and his takeover of the Kaaba. And he thought he would enact all of the hadith that are mentioned, but he couldn't because again, you have to pick and choose just like over here in any way. So the hadith goes on that the Romans will come and fight you at a land called a Dabiq. And the best of the people of earth from the city of Medina will fight, will leave Medina and fight against them. When they are getting ready for war, lining up for war, listen to this very cryptic, the Romans will say to the Muslims, leave us with the group amongst you who have forsaken their religion. We want to fight them. I'll explain. The Muslims will say, La wallahi, we will never leave our brethren and we'll never abandon them to you. I'll finish the hadith and then explain. So the battle will rage on. The battle will rage on. One third of the Muslims will retreat out of cowardice and Allah will never forgive them. When the battle gets tough, they will flee. And the Prophet ﷺ said they will never be forgiven. One third will be killed and they will be the best of shuhada. They stood their ground, they died martyrs and they will be the best of shuhada and one third will conquer, one third will win, and they will not be tested. Maybe the test of the grave, maybe the test of the akhirah, they will not be tested. Allah will bless them and they will not be tested. And they, meaning that one third, will then conquer Qistintiniya, Constantinople. Again, we'll explain this in a while, it's a long hadith. When they will be dividing their ghanima, after they've hanged their swords on the, you know, the, the trees to, to be oiled, then they will hear shaitan cry out that the Dajjal has appeared amongst your children. Thinking it to be true, they will march to fight the Dajjal, but they will find it to be a lie and they will reach Bilad al-Sham, Syria. And when they have lined up to pray Fajr, that is when Isa ibn Maryam will come down after the Dajjal has actually come. And he will then lead the Muslims in war and battle. And when Adu Allah, the Dajjal sees Isa ibn Maryam, he will melt like salt is dissolved in water. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, if he were to be left in that state, he would die. But Isa will kill him. And the people will see the blood of the Jal on the weapon of Isa and Hadith. Now, again, this Hadith is very, very cryptic. It mentions many things. First and foremost, it also reiterates the previous concept of a massive war between the Romans and the Muslims. Now, in this Hadith, it mentions one-third only will die. Whereas the previous hadith mentions 99% will die. As I said, it appears there will be multiple battles, not just one. And in some of them, 99%. And in some of them, one-third. This hadith mentions that this army will conquer Qasthantiniyya. Whereas the previous hadith does not mention that. So maybe there are multiple wars going on in the world. And the Dajjal's announcement will take place in all of them. Shaitan's going to frighten the Muslims. The Dajjal is here. They're going to be expecting the Dajjal because they're seeing the hadith take place. So Shaitan will use it as a tactic. So maybe multiple groups will run back to Bilad al-Sham. And there they will...
they will be with the Mahdi and the Mahdi will then be leading them in Salah and Dajjal will actually have come at that point in time and then Isa will come down as we had uh, mentioned. Another hadith that mentions all of these as well is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the fortress of Muslims on the day of the Malhama, this is where it is mentioned, the Armageddon, the Malhama, will be Ghuta, which is a city near Damishq, one of the best cities in Asham. This hadith is in Abu Dawood, it is authentic. Three things are mentioned, Ghuta, Damishq, and Bilad Asham. Ghuta is a small city, it is still inhabited to this day. And it is maybe an hour or so outside of Damascus, or I don't know exact timing, but somebody, maybe a Syrian brother can tell me, but it's not far from Damascus. When the Prophet said this hadith, Damashq, Ghuta, and Bilad al-Sham were the heartland of the Christian Byzantine Empire. This is like somebody saying, oh, Texas, California, uh, th these are not lands that belong to Islam. But the Prophet predicted that Damashq and Ghuta will be a part of the Ummah. And that when the great Armageddon takes place, I'm translating Malhama as Armageddon. When the great Malhama takes place, the fortress, the, the, the base, the camp of the believers will be where? It will be in Ghuta. It will be in the city of Ghuta in Bilad al-Sham. And of course, the concept of Bilad al-Sham uh, is mentioned many times in, in the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, hadith is in Musadraq al-Hakim, is authentic. When the fitan occur, Iman will be in Bilad al-Sham. When the fitan take place, when the big civil wars, Iman will be in Bilad al-Sham. Now let's pause for a while and look at these hadith and try to extract a series of incidents. What can we extract from all of this? So first and foremost, realize that Bilad al-Sham doesn't just mean Syria. Bilad al-Sham in classical Arabic, pre-partition, when I say partition, don't think 1947, that's the partition of India, Pakistan and whatnot. I mean pre-partition, the Sykes-Picot Agreement. The sykes Peak Agreement in 1917 and then the Treaty of Versailles, Versailles in 1919 which then enacted it. Before the partition of the Muslim Ummah, before England and France decided to carve up the Ummah and hand gifts out to, their, to the victors and they took up the Ottoman Empire. Before that, Bilad al-Sham was essentially what we now call Syria and of course also Jordan and of course Palestine and of course the occupying land that I don't want to mention now the land, the country that is the occupying regime. So all of this was Bilad al-Sham. Okay? This entire region is called Bilad al-Sham. It's not just modern day Syria. Yes, Damishq is Bilad al-Sham, but Palestine is also Bilad al-Sham. And the cities of Palestine and the cities in the modern occupying state, all of them are Bilad al-Sham. Understand this point. Okay? So realize this. Secondly, it shows that towards the very end of all of these trials, the Muslims will be united and they will be fighting outsiders. They will be fighting non-Muslims. And the people from other lands will come like Medina. They will come because they know that they have to now fight on the side of the truth. So the fact that even from Medina, people are traveling all the way to be fighting, it shows that they recognize what is going place. It is also very clear that these wars are taking place with the Mahdi being alive. And when the Mahdi is alive, there is no civil war. How can you fight when the Mahdi is on one side, right? So this is a war between the Mahdi and the believers on one side and the unbelievers on the other side. This is a very clear uh, issue. It also shows, as I said, that in all likelihood, we're talking about multiple wars or maybe Allah knows best. The Mahdi himself is going region to region. In one battle, one third will die. In another battle, 99% will die. Allah knows best. Again, we don't know. We're just, we're just putting all of these together. And the fact that the bird is mentioned shows that this isn't your typical war. That chemical or nuclear or whatever seems very likely in these types of, of a hadith. Wallahu al-musta'an. Also, what is this cryptic phrase where the room are going to say hand us our brethren and the muslims will say no they are our brethren what is all of this this is very interesting it appears and allah knows best that there will be a large group of converts from bilad al-rum to the land of islam and they will be fighting on the side of the mahdi and the muslims 
and the Bilad al Rum are going to view them as being traitors. And from their perspective, they're right. From their perspective, they're right. They are traitors. So they will say, first, we want to deal with these guys because they betrayed us and our values. And the Muslims will say, what? They're not your guys, they're our guys. La wallahi, we will never abandon our brethren for you. This hadith is Sahih Muslim. It's really profound. And inshallah, it indicates that there will be massive conversion. So much so that the Bilad al Rum remnants are angry that how come you have those people? They're angry, they're irritated. And this also shows that these hadith are not anti-Semitic or anti-Western. No, it is good versus evil. And you will find people of all ethnicities on the side of good. And you will find people of all ethnicities on the side of evil as well. We talked about this last week. These hadith are not anti-Semitic. There will be righteous people who see the truth and they will be fighting on the side of truth. And that's why the other group will demand we want them back to uh, us.